Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you here this morning and thank you for spending a little time with us here this morning on this beautiful Memorial Day. I got a question mark on beautiful. It's beautiful because it isn't really raining too hard, just a little bit. It can't rain too hard or my notes will be all blurred and I'll be in big trouble. But anyway, we're, we're proud to have you here to honor those veterans that have served our great country and paid the ultimate sacrifice, the real meaning of this day. Also those veterans that have served our country and laid to rest here in our cemetery. We would like to pay tribute, uh, take this time to pay tribute to those who have served and those brave men and women that are currently serving around the world, defending this great nation and with the freedoms that we so enjoy. My name is Steve Stone, and we'll be uh, with the Spanish Fork Veterans Council, and we'll be your MC today. I'd like to make a few introductions at this time. With us today is a Congressman Burgess Owens, our, our great congressman from this area, and his aide, Holly uh, Sweeten, our mayor. Mike Mendenhall, Brandon Gordon, Councilman Brandon Gordon, Councilwoman, uh, yeah, <laughs> Stacy Beck. Oh, yeah, you're the only one here, so <laughs> thanks, Stacy. Sorry, uh, Chad Argyle and Dave Euler. Kevin. Kevin. Dave's son, Kevin. Dave's son, Kevin. Yeah. My wife told me wrong. Sorry. <laughs> we have some of our attendants here. We have our royalty. Here on the front row, we have uh, Miss Spanish Fork, Grace Einer. I can hear. Anyway, <laughs> and would you introduce your, your attendant? This is my music attendant, Haley Campbell. Haley Campbell. <laughs> I'd also like to introduce our guest speaker today, Dr. Rick Nielsen. Representing the American Legion, Randy Jensen. <laughs> Representing the Veterans of Foreign War, Randy Morgan. <laughs> and representing the Spanish Fork Venter Veterans Council, John Duncan. <laughs> At this time I need to give some special thanks. This event would not be possible without the, the help of several people. Come on. <laughs> I'd like to recognize a few at this time. Our great cemetery staff, the girl and boy scouts, the girl and boy scouts and their leaders, local students, the great citizens of our community and the veterans and auxiliaries that help with placing all of these crosses with flags and poppies. Also, those that have freely given of their time and resources to help maintain and keep, <laughs> keep up to date these crosses and this beautiful monument. Honoring all those veterans that have served and are laid to rest here in our cemetery. There are currently 1,893 crosses uh, across our cemetery. We also have, if you'll notice, seven gold crosses behind us. Those gold crosses represent 17 uh, soldiers that were missing in action, those that never returned home. I would like to recognize one of our great veterans here today, uh, Roy Johns. Roy around. Roy, give us a hand. Stand up. We want to give you. Roy's been helping keep track of all this stuff, names on monuments, crosses, names on crosses, plaques engraved for many, many years. Also, I'd like to thank Jason Hill. He's over here. He's one of our, he's, he's been the one that's been putting the, the names on the walls, the plaques on the walls. He's also our sound guy today. Jason, I hope we don't blow your equipment up. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm saddened to say 
We lost 41 veterans this year, all great men, but I would like to recognize three of these. First, we lost our oldest World War II veteran, Mark McKell. He died at the age of 103. Second, we lost one of our founders of, our, of this beautiful veterans memorial and was vigilant in helping maintain it, Gordon Ludlow. And third was Paul Hartley. His name is the last one there. He just recently passed away uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was very, very instrumental in having these crosses made. He, uh, he made se ha had several of these crosses made. Who's ever there? Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> okay. I got to get closer. Got to raise higher. Okay. Here better. We've kind of started a new tradition uh, a few years ago. Uh, would like to play the Armed Forces Medley. And as we play the Armed Forces Medley, would like to honor those veterans here today. Veterans, as your service song is, is played, uh, will you please come up and stand under your flag and by your, vine, uh, by your monument? After we play the uh, Armed Forces Medley, we will be pre presented, uh, we will present the national anthem by the South County Barbershop Quartet. No, you're fine. The United States Army. Please come up and stand by your monument. United States Marines. United States Navy. United States Air Force. United States Coast Guard.
Thank you. We're, g we're now going to post the colors and ra uh, raise the colors uh, of the United States of America and our service staff uh, flags from half staff. The colors, or two of the colors, will be played by our post bugler, Marin Christensen. And good luck. And our, by our sergeant of arms today will be Ray Olson. After the after the colors have been raised, our national anthem will be presented by our quartet. Will the audience please arise? Now have our quartet come forward. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red, rockets red, bursting in red, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the land of the free and the home of the This is, this is one, one Memorial Day I think we'll all remember. I, I hope we remember those that have served this great country and have fallen in its support. I'd, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker today. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker and good friend. Dr. Richard P. Nelson, U.S. Navy, retired. Dr. Nelson has served as the founding president and CEO of Rocky Mountain University of Health Professions in Provo, Utah, and Nordic, Nordic College of Osteopathic Medicine, or Nordicom. It was his vision and leadership which brought about the creation of both these institutions. After ob obtaining two separate bachelors of science degrees, the first from Brigham Young University in pre-physical therapy, and the second from the University of Utah in physical therapy, doing this while serving in the Utah Army National Guard for nearly six years. Dr. Nelson served in the United States Navy Medical Corps for over 20 years during the Vietnam and Persian Gulf conflicts. During his Navy tours, he served as a chief physical therapist for the entire Na U.S. Navy and as a physical therapy consultant to the U.S. Congress and Senate, the Surgeon General and the U.S. Supreme Court and the Pentagon and the U.S. President and White House. While in the Navy, Dr. Nelson obtained a Master's of Science degree in newer, I'm going to say this other one, newer physio uh, <laughs> physiology, I can't say that other one, 
uh, from the University of Washington and obtained, obtained a Doctor of Science degree from the University of St. Augustine with emphasis in, emphasis in clini clinical electrophysiology. He retired from the U.S. Navy in 1994 as a full commander. At his, after his retirement from the U.S. Navy, Dr. Nelson co-founded and served as pre, uh, founding president and CEO of the Institution of Clinical Electrophysiology in Provo and CEO, uh, president and CEO of Rocky Mountain University of Health Professions. Dr. Nielsen was co-founder with his wife, Jody, who's with him today, and their eldest daughter, Kindy. They formed two charitable uh, foundations, Reach the Children and World of Difference, both of which have focused on enhancing education opportunities by building schools for underserved children in Africa and focused on regenerative and sustainable agriculture and health nutrition initiatives for the people of Africa. For over 34 years, Dr. Nielsen has led, people, or led teams to Africa. In 2013, Dr. Nielsen and his wife Jody received the American Red Cross Humanitarian of the Year Award uh, for their service to the people in Africa. Dr. Nielsen has received several recognitions uh, in, his medical, in the medical community, including the 2015 Leader of the Year Award for the American Physical for, um, yeah, from the American Physical Therapy and As Association, and in 2019, the Utah Hero of the Year for Healthcare Education. The Nielsens live in Salem, Utah, and have five children and six grandchildren, one great grandchildren. Might also add that Rick was born and raised here in Spanish Fork, just, just down the street. Dr. Nelson. Wow, Steve's, Steve's pretty tall. Uh, Congressman Owens. Um, honored guests, city, uh, city council leaders, uh, and dear friends of the VFW and the American Legion, all you who are um, veterans, uh, many of you are still standing after that uh, very touching uh, musical rendition, recognizing our various uh, services that we served in. I'm honored and uh, very, very humble to be able to be with all these people behind me that I grew up with, and many of you in front of me that I grew up with. Uh, my wife says I've never grown up yet, so uh, this is a great opportunity for me to be able to rub shoulders with many people that uh, I haven't seen for many years. I'm honored to, uh, to be here to honor those who have fallen, um, members uh, of our armed services and patriots, Memorial Day is a day that's set aside to be able to honor those who have fallen, but we're going to also honor other people here today. Uh, throughout the country, people are uniting, even at this particular time, in formal and informal uh, celebrations and gatherings and recognitions to honor and to pay tribute and gratitude uh, to those who have served our country. And those particularly who have fallen for the great cause in which they were enlisted, so that we may live the freedom that they stood and that they died to protect. Our gathering today is just one small spark in the flame of pride that burns across this nation today and every single day. To some people, this weekend, this Memorial Day weekend, marks the beginning of the summer season. Uh, many, it means barbecues and backyard gatherings. And uh, to some, it means the Indy 500. But to me and to you, obviously, it means more than that. It is a day of remembrance, a day of remembrance, a day set apart for us to honor the loyalty and the bravery and the valor of our fallen comrades and this noble calling as a member of the United States Armed Forces to remember their achievements, their courage, and their selflessness, and to say to them, thank you for your sacrifices. General Patton, George S. Patton said, it is foolish and wrong for us to mourn the men and women who died 
in, in war. Rather, we should thank God that such men and women lived. This day is also dedicated to reflect not only upon these patriots and these heroes who passed through the mortal veils of mortality into immortality for each of us today, but also to remember and honor those who faithfully and devotedly served who didn't die, who now live with the consequences of the wars that they served in, including the trauma, both physical and emotional. These military brothers and sisters live each day with memories of the death of their comrades in arms, as well as haunted memories of war that keep them from sleeping sometimes at night. This day, we not only honor our fallen patriots and comrades, but also those military brothers and sisters who are still living. We honor those quiet professionals who answered the noble calling to serve the people of the United States of America in peacetime as well. And yes, and even in a different way, we honor and celebrate those currently serving in the armed forces and those men and women who will one day don a military uniform and also answer that call to serve. We all know that freedom is not free. It costs the blood shed by American sons and daughters who selflessly served their country and ours and laid down their lives for our protection. No, freedom is not free. They knew they may not return, yet they left. They knew that they may fall, yet they fought. They knew what it could cost them and they were willing to pay that price. They knew that freedom also is not free. <laughs> their sense of duty, honor, and country defined their character and were reflective of their actions and choice to leave their family behind, to leave their professions, to leave their homes, and to heed the call of freedom, to lay down their lives for that cause. Their actions, their decisions, their ultimate sacrifice not only represents the best of who we are as a nation, but they are examples of who we should aspire to become. Selfless, service-minded, protectors of right. No, freedom is not free. The incredible courage and selfless action of those who have fallen have enabled our freedoms to be preserved and our way of life to continue. Ronald Reagan once said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in their bloodstreams. It must be fought for, protected, and handed down to them to do the same. Truly, we as a nation should feel fortunate and grateful to have no shortage of those who were and are ready to walk away from their lives to defend our lives by answering that call of duty. Whether 250 years ago with the first shots that were fired at Concord and Lexington that set in motion the Revolutionary War to the recent deaths of our American military brothers and sisters who have fallen in Ukraine. These women and men are our greatest heroes. Only if Marvel could do movies to recognize the true heroes in this life. Millions of Americans have fought and died on battlefields and in rice fields, here and abroad to defend our freedoms and our way of life. No, freedom is not free. Today, our troops continue to make the ultimate sacrifice even today. And even now, we are losing troops. More Americans still step forward and say, send me. They follow in the footsteps of generations of dedicated and loyal Americans who are willing to pay that ultimate price of freedom that we take so for granted every day. Memorial Day, once called De <clears throat> Decoration Day, 
was officially observed for the first time May 30th, 1868, 154 years ago today. And today we remember the over 1.4 million American heroes, true heroes, who gave up their lives to keep us free and to defend and protect our rights and our Constitution, who gave their last full measure of their creation for this country that we love. Today we honor and remember those who left their homes to protect those who stayed home. We also honor their mothers and their fathers, their sisters and their brothers, their sons and their daughters, friends and others. Those who watched these American service members leave their home, leave their family, leave their professions to travel to lands unfamiliar and put their lives in harm's way, protecting the lives of people that they've never met. The most selfless act one can make, hoping and praying that they would one day return back home safely, unaffected mentally, unaffected physically and emotionally. Said Claudia Pemberton, quote, this is the day we pay homage to all those who didn't come home. It is a day of solemn contemplation over the true cost of freedom. We honor today you for your selfless sacrifices as well, you veterans, your families, we pay tribute to you for accepting that same call to serve, the call to defend, the call to protect, the call to preserve our flag and our freedoms. The history of our nation and those who can serve, who have served can be summed up in a short and simple yet fitting phrase. These are all ordinary people who by virtue of their service and sacrifice became or will become extraordinary heroes. A Greek philosopher once said, the bravest are surely those who have the clearest vision of what is before them, glory and danger alike, and yet notwithstanding go out to meet it in extraordinary ways. The service members we honor today came from ordinary walks of life but they shared several fundamental extraordinary qualities. They possess, possessed courage, pride, determination, selflessness, dedication to duty, and integrity. All the qualities needed to serve a cause larger than oneself and to rise to extraordinary ranks of humanity. These extraordinary patriots didn't ask to leave their homes to fight on distant battlefields. Many didn't even volunteer. They didn't go to war because they loved fighting. They were called to be part of something bigger than themselves. They were ordinary people who represented extraordinary things in extraordinary ways and in extraordinary times. They rose to the nation's call because they wanted to protect a nation, a nation which has given them and given us so much. An anonymous author once wrote this, it's the fallen soldier and sailor, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of press. It is the fallen soldier and sailor, not the poet, who gave us the freedom of speech. It's the fallen soldier and sailor, not the politician, that ensures our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is the fallen soldier and sailor who saluted the flag, reverenced the flag, honored the things the flag stood for, who served and defended beneath that flag, who died for that flag, and whose coffin was draped by that flag. In closing, may I say a few words about TAPS. Today, Memorial Day, TAPS will be played in backyards, in courtyards, in formal and informal gatherings, around the corners and in backyards and across the fences in neighborhoods, in rotundas, in cathedrals, in church buildings and synagogues that dot the world. Taps will be played in the back rooms, in the bedrooms, in the classrooms, in the courtrooms, 
and in the quiet and solemn chambers of the hearts of hundreds of millions of people throughout the world, and of course in cemeteries such as this. Tabs has always played to honor the men and women who paid that ultimate sacrifice, who gave their life for our country and our freedom. There are only 24 notes in the taps, and when you hear it, it tends to make us stand tall and proud. During taps, we are reverent. We do not talk at the end, and we do not clap or cheer. Of all the military bugle calls, none is so easily recognized or more emotional than the call of taps. The melody is humbling, reflective, eloquent, emotional, and moving. And each time we hear it, we tend to escape from the realities of life that surround us and enter into a domain of tranquility as we silently and emotionally pay respect for our fallen patriots. There are no official words to the music of Taps, but here is one of the most popular verses. Day is done, gone the sun, from the hills, from the lake, from the sky. All is well, safely rest, God is nigh. On Memorial Day, a tradition dictates that the stars and stripes are raised briskly against the wind to the top of the staff and then solemnly lowered to the position of half staff where it remains until 12 o'clock noon. It is then raised to full staff for the remainder of the day. The half staff position remembers the more than 1 million, 1.4 million men and women who gave their lives to this nation. At noon, their memory is raised by the living who resolve not to let their sacrifice be in vain, but to rise up in their stead and continue the fight for liberty. Thank you very much for allowing me to share my thoughts with you today. It's been my honor to be able to recognize not only our fallen comrades and our uh, veterans of foreign wars as well as our American Legion veterans, but also to the many mothers and wives and husbands and fathers and brothers and sons and sisters and sons and daughters and grandparents and extended family members who do, who do their solemn duty to ensure their loved one is not forgotten. They carry on each day with pictures on mantles and momentums of a life not fully lived. They carry on each day understanding that their soldier or their sailor chose this life of service. And thus they understood the potentiality of that death as a sacrifice for the sake of freedom. Those left behind carry on the soldiers and sailors message and mission. Today we honor you, the families of those lost, for you bear a burden that only you can comprehend. We are grateful for the support you gave your soldier and your sailor so they could carry out their mission of protecting and preserving the freedoms that we now enjoy. And yes, it is our responsibility as, as American citizens to remember the nation's men and women who are fallen and to honor them this day. Whether they died on foreign lands in the heat of battle or after a lifetime of peace having worn the military uniform, may we never forget these women and these men who all too much gave the cost of freedom. For their service to this country is the greatest of all gifts to us. Thank you for allowing me to be here and remember this anonymous quote. Our flag today does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each patriot who died to protect it. And said Elmer Davis, this nation will remain the land of the free only so long as it is the home of the brave. The United States of America is the home of the brave and the free because it is the home of the brave. May God bless you. May God bless your families those Americans who have sacrificed so much for each of us and our families to enjoy the freedoms we enjoy. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
doctor. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we would now like to hear and invite Congressman Owens to make some re remarks for us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> let me just start off by saying, uh, Dr. Nelson, remarkable remarks. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for your service. Uh, your comments were so uh, so timely. I just want to add just a few thoughts. Can you guys hear me okay? I want to make sure. How's that? How about if I just pick it up? Okay. <clears throat> what a beautiful day to commemorate those who paid the price for us to live this great country of freedom. You know, I, uh, I was very fortunate to be, be raised down south, the deep south, uh, days where we didn't have this type of assimilation we have today, but a time in which my race was so proud to be called Americans. Uh, my dad was a World War II vet, as were three of his brothers, and uh, I was taught very early in my life to respect that flag. Uh, when I was given the opportunity to, to, uh, to walk to school in seventh, seventh, seventh grade to raise and lower the flag, I was taught never to let it touch the ground. I was taught that the many who, who had gone to war with my dad, who never came back, and he always respected those who had paid that ultimate price. I want to thank you guys for taking this time out, because as I said before, uh, freedom is not passed down to blood. It's fought for, it's taught for, and it's stood for. And, uh, and that's what we have to, as a country, remember and never forget those who have given us the opportunity. We're honoring today those who went to war uh, as far back as, as uh, in fact, this, this is a, a process that started back in the Civil War. It's called the, Dec the Declaration Day in those days. It was a day in which um, those who had passed away in the Civil War and, and beyond before had, had, was actually being honored. It, uh, in 71, 1971, it was then turned into a federal holiday. What I'm excited about is knowing that we will always, can always remember those frontline warriors, those who went to war and didn't come back, and those who went to war and didn't come back, those who were able to carry on the priorities and the love of, that, of, that, of those who, who fought and died for our country. I had a chance to learn a little bit of my history, because see, every culture, every race shares the same history and love for our nation. The very first black uh, recipient of the Medal of Honor, his name was William Carney. He was part of the 53rd uh, military, uh, uh, but the, was it? The 54th, and, uh, and out, of, out, of, um, out of Massachusetts. It was an all black army that left the North to go South to fight for freedom during the Civil War. They went South knowing that if they were captured, it was already pronounced by the, the, the Confederate president that they would be hung instantly, and yet they went south anyway, because they knew that that was where the fight was for the freedom for their race, for our country, and our, and our future. As they, as they fought uh, the, their very fast battle, first battle, Fort Wagner, and going toward the Fort Wagner, the flag bearer was shot and killed. William Carney grabbed the flag and continued his walk toward the fight. Toward the, toward the fight. He was wounded, never let the flag touch the ground, when they, kept, when they saved him and brought him back, he still never let the flag touch the ground. There was a story that I was taught when I was a kid, something that, I, that had me thinking when I was in seventh, eighth grade, that one day I might be a Marine. I might one day stand for the flag and for our country, for those who fought so diligently and given the, 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 the ultimate price. We have a tradition in my, ha my family in which uh, every Memorial Day and every Fourth of July, I, we raise the flag late at night, when all uh, normally when our neighbors have gone to sleep, and we just go throughout the neighborhood and just put flags. So when we wake up, they find them. And my grandkids have now become part of that tradition. I was so proud of my little seven seven year old the other night after, after we went out and placed the flags, made sure they never they knew it was never to touch the ground, and I came back and asked them, "What exactly is this day all about?" And my little seventh seven year old grandson said is to remember those who fought and died for our freedom. I am so proud of parents who are teaching our kids these great lessons. It is up to us as grandparents and parents 
to never let the theme, the understanding of what men and women that are represented here fought, lived, and died for. It's a freedom, something that cannot be found anywhere throughout our entire world. We are the light of the world. We should may remain that by remembering that our life is a secondary to the freedom of our fellow citizens. I just want to say this also for those who did come back. We remember you. We thank you. We want to make sure in Congress we're, we're doing those things that will highlight the sacrifice you, you took and the sacrifice you made. We have right now, we just recently, this last Congress, we passed something called the Major Richard Star. It's closing the loopholes that denied in the past retired veterans their less, less than 20 years their, their uh, uh, the benefits. There's one that guarantees an annual a cost, cost of living for, dis, uh, for, for cost of living disability. And it's also one that just recently allowed the spouses to have opportunities, opportunities for, for employment. Just know that we have a country that we'll never forget. As long as we don't, as long as we understand and stay close to that, we have a country that will be free, that will be appreciative, and will honor those who paid the ultimate price. Thank you for the opportunity to speak a little bit for you guys today. Thank you again. We really, really appreciate, Dr. what you've done, what you said. And uh, let's make sure we continue this process, this great tradition. Thank you so much. Thank you, Congressman. I think you had the right idea. Uh, we will not be pleased to have our barbershop quartet uh, present us with the musical number, God Bless America. Please feel free to follow along. After the first round, we would like the audience to please stand and sing another round with us. After we get done with that, we will ask Chaplain Steve Lowe with the Veterans of Foreign War to give us a closing prayer. Hi, we're going to sing through the, the song twice, actually, to give our spin on it. But then we will ask you to join us, and we'll sing it a third time with all of you. Thank you. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. My home, my home. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, from the mountains to, to, the the prairies, to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Please stand and join us if you would. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America.
America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Thank you. Thank you. Our righteous, eternal Heavenly Father, we close this memorial service this day asking thy blessing upon us as patriots and as veterans and families of those who of the departed. We pray that thou will bless this holy ground where these veterans lie, that it might remind us of our freedom and our, the things that we enjoy in life today. We ask thee to please bless those that are at this time guarding the gates of freedom, that thou would give them hope and happiness in their lives, that they are doing a wonderful service for us. We pray that thou will watch over us to stay in our journeys when we depart. And this we pray in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we lower the colors, Congressman Owens has a, a presentation. I'd like to present the flag that's been flown over, over the United States Capitol for the Spanish Fork Veteran Council. Thank you. Thank, you, much. thank you much for your service. Appreciate thank it. You very much. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman. We will now lower the colors and service flags, have a gun salute, and play taps. As taps is played, please place your hand over your hearts. For mili military veterans, it is proper to render, ha render a hand salute. Taps will conclude our service for today. On behalf of the Spanish Fork Veterans Council, the American Legion, the veterans of foreign war, the families of all those fallen veterans and the families of all those with loved ones currently serving this great nation. Thank you for your attendance today. Through all that we've gone through, we've had a heck of a day. But I'm sure glad you stuck with us. I think it's been a good one. May God bless and watch over you today as you honor your loved ones. May God bless our soldiers throughout the world and in harm's way. And may God bless America. Sergeant at Arms.
That concludes our program for today. Thanks again for being here, and may God bless you and enjoy your day. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Boy, that was good. <laughs> you made it through the rain. You made it through. <laughs>